Hi there and welcome back to English 75A. Uh, today I'll be talking a little bit about the triac paragraph structure, which is how I want you to structure your body paragraphs for your literary analysis essay. I know some of you are already well to work on it, but this is a really easy and versatile structure that you can apply to practically any kind of writing you do uh, in college for class and in the professional context as well. I want to make it really clear at the beginning though that this is for body paragraphs. Doesn't doesn't have to uh, be the way that you structure your intro and conclusions and in fact I think it won't really work well for those because I think we already have a pretty good like gut instinct that the intro and the conclusion are different animals. Um, they're the two pieces of bread that hold the sandwich together, but they're not the reason you're making the sandwich, right? It's for whatever you put in the middle there, whether it be, you know, I don't know, PB&J, which, disgusting, but maybe you do that, ham and cheese, carnitas, whatever. Intro and, co intro and conclusion are like the bread. And I'll be honest, I think they're the last two paragraphs you should write. I mean, we've all sat down in front of the computer and burn through hours trying to come up with that perfect intro and yet we don't have those body paragraphs written. You're not going to win or lose the essay in the intro and in fact you're going to write a better intro and conclusion after you've knocked out those body paragraphs because you've got a better idea of what you're really talking about then. So triac paragraph structure. You should take some notes on this and walk through it. It's an acronym and the T stands for topic sentence. A lot of you will already know this term and you know it from previous uh, English classes. It's that first sentence. It introdu introduces and summarizes that s the subject of the paragraph. And so it's kind of like a little baby thesis statement if you want to put it that way. I know that you might have some books or past instructors that said the topic sentence can be anywhere. You can put it at the beginning, you can put it at the middle, you can put it at the end, you know. Get creative. You know, there is some truth to that. But let's face it. We want the people who read our writing to understand our structure and get to our point in the clearest and cleanest and most efficient uh, way possible. Vast majority of instructors across disciplines are going to be looking for the topic sentence at the beginning. So put it there. Don't be playing Where's Waldo with it. Next coming up is a restatement or restriction of the topic sentence. I got an extra space there I'm going to have to get rid of. That doesn't look nice, does it? So this is an element of the triac paragraph structure, which I consider optional. But if you feel like your subject matter in the paragraph is extremely complicated or new to the reader, or if you're worried that your reader is going to get lost in that paragraph, a restatement or restriction is really going to help emphasize your big point. Restatement, all, all that really means is a refashioning of the original ideas of the topic sentence. You're saying the same thing in different words in order to really help people get to that point. A restriction, however, takes that topic sentence and narrows it down even further. And that can be helpful too if you want to apply additional clarification uh, to your topic sentence, but you don't want your topic sentence to go on and on and on and on and on. After that, we have illustration. That's what the I stands for. Now, this isn't the part of the paragraph where you get to doodle. Oh man, there's another space. Boy, okay. I'm not going to let it bother me. I'm going to keep going. The illustration part of the paragraph is really the reason that the paragraph exists. Think about the word illustration in terms of illustrating your point. So it's going to be research, evidence, facts, data. In our case, it's going to be quotations, right? It's going to be exact words from the text that we use. Um, and those quotations are going to help our reader believe our thesis statement more.
Now, after that comes analysis. Analysis is where you unpack that illustration. You show why you put it in um, and what it does exactly to help people believe your thesis statement. It's the unpacking part of the, uh, of the uh, paragraph when it's written in triac form and it's extremely crucial. The analysis section also shows that you're really in charge of the essay. I mean, when we first had to write research papers or put in quotations and stuff like that, what did we do? We often found the biggest, fattest, longest quotations we could and shoved them in there and just because, well, it's somebody else's expert ideas. That's got to be good. And secondly, they take up a lot of room. But you got to show that you understand why you put that illustration in there. And that's where analysis comes in. Small digression. Uh, when I was an undergraduate, about your guys' age, I had to take an English class. It was British survey and um, British lit survey. And we were writing uh, an essay on Alexander Pope. And he was a really famous poet in the 1700s, not so far from where we are in the class. And my friend, when he wrote the paper, he took these big, fat, long quotations from Alexander Pope, like huge, 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 just blam, 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 put them in there. And very little connective tissue or explaining or analysis tissue surrounding them. So we're talking like those body paragraphs were like, 70% quotation or illustration, but not much of him explaining why they're there, what they're doing. He just chained together a bunch of big quotes. So he gets the paper back and <laughs> the professor wrote at the top, Alexander Pope gets an A on this paper. You, however, get a D. And it was his way of saying, dude, you didn't show me what all of this meant. And the analysis section lets you make that show. Now, there's some really important analysis signals that you can use to let your reader know that you're moving out of illustration and into you explaining why this material that, put, that you put in is so important. And it could be something like this. This quotation helps the reader see that when the author Benjamin Franklin said this, comma, it helps show that um, these words, this particular passage demonstrates that all of these, say, all of these uh, opening analysis signals help the reader understand, oh, they're going to unpack it for me. They're going to give me uh, a way of looking at this information that's going to be useful to that broader goal of uh, proving the thesis statement. Finally, that C, a lot of you probably guessed, is the concluding sentence. Um, it's a final sentence, um, and I do think it's optional. But again, if you are worried that your audience is going to have trouble understanding the paragraph because it's really new material, or it's really complicated, or your audience may be straining hard just to read at the level you're writing, putting in that concluding sentence helps to reinforce your main point, the topic sentence. And really, it's kind of a fraternal twin of the topic sentence. It's getting the same big points across that were in the topic sentence. So I've given you three areas that I definitely want to see in every body paragraph. So in your notes, I do want you to highlight the T, the I, and the A. That's the absolute bare minimum that I will be expecting because um, without those three elements, it's just not enough for it to be a paragraph on its own. And if, if you're having trouble remembering which elements of triac you want to use, that you must use rather, just think of Tia, your favorite aunt, T-I-A. Yeah, see what I did there? I'm too lingual. <laughs>